Oh, this is Robert Markle, alias The Markle. And I usually like to do comedy, but at this time in the world, I'm doing a video for some serious information. Yay! Uh, I encourage you all to make your own videos sharing information of ideas that you have and activities that you have done that keep you safe at this time of the coronavirus pandemic. It's very dangerous. Uh, Life-threatening people are dying now as, we, as I speak. Uh, horrible. But we, the people, have got to join together to do the best we can to protect each other and keep each other safe and ourselves safe by physical distancing, improve our socializing and communicating from a distance, but physically distance ourselves from each other for the time being until science can help correct the problem here. My first idea is the six feet distancing, at least six feet. Why are they saying six feet? Well, I've done some professional acting before, and I think part of the idea is something I've ex experienced in my acting experience. When the lighting is just right, when you're on camera, you can possibly see little spittles of water coming out. When everybody speaks, we spit a little. That's gross, but it's a fact. In dealing with that, in reality, you will recognize why they want us to stand at least six feet of, of, away from each other. <laughs> to keep from spitting on each other and transferring the virus. So that's my first tip. There's other tips I want to share with you that are quick and easy. If you don't have tons of money, there's things you can do still to protect yourself. At work, the last few years, I've noticed that the flu bug was flying around the company. Employee after employee after employee quickly were getting the flu bug and getting sick. And I um, was tired of getting sick, so I tried to think through what the common denominator was. And I think the common den denominator was the time clock. Everybody with their bare hands were touching the time clock every day um, at the beginning and ending of their shift. So what I propose and what I started to do a few years ago and cut down my becoming sick, I did not get the flu bug when it flew around the company as often as readily as everybody else did by simply taking a second and instead of touching the time clock with your bare hand if you don't have a paper towel if you don't have a rubber glove if you don't have anything take your hand and put it inside your shirt a safe spot inside your own clothing and then you can punch the time clock safely with your hand without picking up a virus. If you pick up a virus, it goes on your shirt. Well, it's down by your belly then, and that's less likely you're going to rub your face on your belly. It's possible when you take your shirt off, maybe, but don't do that. Wash your face then. Wash your hands. When in doubt, wash. Another idea is doorknobs. If you don't have the rubber gloves, if the shelves in the grocery stores are all empty, ah, well, get yourself your hand into a safe spot again. Put it inside your shirt and grab onto the doorknob with your shirt. Now, if you have a dress shirt and a tie, that would be difficult then you'll want some kind of glove or some kind of clothing or a long sleeve on your jacket 
or the edge of your coat tail or just get a glove any kind of glove like this this is a Mickey Mouse glove <laughs> wear that use that whatever works to keep your flesh from touching the doorknob that should be keeping you safe at least for a time being until you can get to the sink after you've opened the door get to the sink wash up with Purell as Dr. Dr. David Price, an excellent doctor you should follow and look up on YouTube to find out detailed, specific things you can do to protect yourself from the coronavirus. Other things, when you cough or sneeze, more so for other people's protection because this coronavirus is really stealth. It wants to kill humanity. It wants to kill human beings. So we don't know who's carrying it or who's not carrying it. So I need to assume that everybody has the coronavirus. In that case, I act accordingly, protecting myself. And if everybody has it, that means I might have it. And if I have it, I don't want to be relaying it to somebody else if I'm not showing symptoms it's possible I could relay the virus to somebody else. So if I need to sneeze in a moment, get pollen in my nose or dust that tickles me and causes me to sneeze, how can I protect other human beings from getting the virus from my explosion? Well, a quick thing that I learned from Geo at one of my other jobs, a great kid, he did this. Achoo! He sneezed inside his own shirt. That's gross, very gross, but effective. It's better than letting the, the spittles and the liquid and everything fly out and go to whomever. You've kept it to yourself at least. Um, and then you can clean up later. You can always do the laundry later on, but you've saved the life of somebody, potentially. We won't know for five days. When anybody asks me, how are you today, Robert? I tell them, I won't know for five days. It sucks right now. Until we get some vaccine, uh, we don't know our pure health for five days. Crazy, crazy time to be alive. So, Sneeze into your shirt. If you have to cough, cough in your shirt. Yes, you can cough and sneeze into your elbow, but look at this. It can easily go up and over. A spray of liquid from your mouth or your nose could easily, with the pressure, power of that explosion, go up and over your arm to other people, other objects in the room and stick on metal for days unending and cardboard for days unending as we hear. So, to be more personally responsible for our own sneezes and own coughs, I suggest we sneeze into our shirt like Geo. And another thing, before you sneeze or cough into your shirt, I hope it's before then, but still, if not, anything that goes in your shirt came from yourself. It's all a part of you and your own doing. So you should be able to tolerate that. But in the, in the morning, when you wake up, if you get the Sandman had visited you, if you wake up in the morning and you have sand in the corners of your eyes, the coronavirus can be transferred by into our bodies from our fingers our hands touching the virus picking it up someplace and then touching our mouths inside touching our nose if we want to pick our nose or touching our eyes and going into the eye ducts or anywhere on the eyes if that's the case then you if you're wanting to get rid of the sand around your eyes, uh, if you have an itch on your face, anything. What's a safe, 
piece of clothing that is ideally clean before a sneeze or a cough. Um, it would be the inside of your clothing. So what I do then, if I need to itch my face or to get the sand out of my eyes, is I take my shirt and I turn it inside out this time. And I can then scrape the sand out of my eyes because the clothing has been closest to my body already considered a safe zone because it's been protected all day anywhere I go from the outer world by being on the inside of my clothing. So that's my quick tips for protecting yourself and protecting others from us in case we're carriers. Be personally responsible. We, the people, need to take care of ourselves. We need to join together uh, socially by communicating what works for us and keeps us happy, healthy, and safe. I love you all, and I wish you the best, and I hope you a safe journey through this year. And protect yourself in all ways. And when in doubt, wash it off. Wash it out. Thanks.